Welcome to the shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we're going to be learning how to get more power from your brakes by sanding and burning in the rotors. My socks are tucked into my tights too. <laughs> Where's the paparazzi? For this task, <coughs> Need coronavirus. For this task, you will need a center lock rotor removal tool or a T25 if you have six belt rotors, a three mil Allen key, paper towels, brake cleaner, and sandpaper. Why are we doing this? Well, nobody likes it when their brakes are making wild turkey noises. Oh, that sounds good. But also, if you don't have your brakes and pads properly, quote unquote, burned in, you don't have proper power from your brakes. And I think a lot of people don't know to burn in their brakes or not, don't know to burn in their rotors, or maybe they spilled something on their rotors and now don't know why the brakes aren't pulling properly. There's a couple ways to know if you need to burn in your pads and rotors. One of them is obviously this horrible, it's not doing it now. There it goes. Horrible squawking noise when you're riding, or in this case, we can get it to do it just by holding the brake and pushing. That's obviously not a good sign. Right off the bat, you ride the first time you pull your brakes, you're just like, whoa, that does not feel right. That is probably a issue with the pads and rotors. If your brakes slowly over the course of a descent seem to be getting weaker and weaker, that is probably a bleed issue, assuming you have hydraulic brakes, and we will have a different video about that. If they get stronger the more you use them, it's probably a burning in issue because you're essentially burning off that crud as you go. We know why these brakes aren't working well. We're gonna blame it on someone else. Mackie's brother rode this bike right after we swapped the pads and rotors, and I think we tried to explain how to burn in the brakes, we didn't do a very good job, evidently, so they never got burned in right off the bat, which often kind of leads to problems down the road. We just want people to yell at us for putting our stanchion in. Fun fact, it doesn't hurt anything. Dun, 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 dun. Gotta get carpal tunnel. The front one seems to be worse from my observation. Okay, so you are going to Step one, remove your rotor. That's gonna be hard like that. Try not to slice your hands on the center lock rotors are far superior to other kinds of rotors. And then we're gonna pop out the pads. You're gonna pop off this little guy. Does he have a name? Uh, I have no idea. It's yeah, really just really a safety thing. Undo the pin. Okay. I feel like there's not a great way to tell by looking at your pads and rotors if they're not burned in. Well, sometimes yeah, you can sometimes tell, but can tell. these ones actually don't look too bad. Oh. Just a couple things to look for in brake pads. Like these brake pads are obviously very new. They're not worn down at all. So that's a good sign, right? Cause your brakes could be squawking because you're on metal. I mean, I think the fact that it's so black isn't good. It's, it's so more metallic. the shininess. The sort of metallic-iness. Yeah, the fact that it's like reflective. That generally is a bad sign. This is all the sandpaper you're gonna give me. It's Should so be tiny. plenty. <laughs> yeah, but it's like hard to hold. So what are you doing? Just Why? sanding all this crud off. You're trying to take off essentially a layer of the pad. So any kind of contaminants that are on there, the like shininess that's on there, you just wanna file down. I mean, it's probably like a 10th of a millimeter or yeah, something. This won't it's... really affect the life of your brakes. No. And if they weren't working right. beforehand, like why would you rather have <laughs> unworking brakes for like two days longer? I'm sure someone will still be mad. They'll be like, I can't spend the money to <laughs> run down my brakes with sandpaper. Burning in brakes is something that I really feel like bike shops should do when they swap brake pads but they don't a lot of the time. So I, I think, think they usually try, rare. but like, you know, they've got a timeline, so they're gonna only do it like real quick and real short. And like, sometimes you need a little bit more than that. I'm just saying that if you pick up your bike at the shop and you just got new pads and it's not braking well, it's not necessarily that they did a bad job. You know, they might have just not burned it in, which depending on your definition of bad job. And one thing you wanna be aware of is to not do what Sid just did, which is do? touch the rotors afterwards, oh, right. because there's grease on your, or oils on your hands. These are pads, not rotors. I'm sorry, touch the pads afterwards. You basically want the sandpaper to be the last thing. You can blow on it. Can I touch it with this or no? I would just blow on it. 
This is not nearly enough sandpaper. You're basically just scuffing up the rotor is the goal. You're not really like trying to get a layer off of it. You're just scuffing up both sides. No, oh, I slipped and touched it. I could probably find you a bigger piece of sandpaper if you want. So now you offer. So He's like, don't touch the rotor, these. but here's like a two millimeter wide piece of sandpaper. All right. Oh. I'll go get you some better sandpaper. Okay. I hereby present you with a large piece. <laughs> With a large piece of sandpaper. Okay, that's gonna make this a lot easier. Ouch, sandpaper in my hand. <laughs> it's not really like a good way to hold the rotor while you're doing this. You're either touching the rotor or sandpapering your hand. I mean, I think if you put it down on the table and held it in the center, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, I've done this to death at Let's this point. See it. So if you look at it, there's some scratch marks on it and that's good. That's basically just like buffing it a little bit. Do you have to shake this? No. I'm gonna get my coffee out of the way. Right. Now if you look at these, less shiny and they're like, they're less black. So that's what you want. You want them to look sort of like new brake pads look. That was a lot. It didn't really spray, it just gushed. And then you probably want to spray the backside also. I think I'm on gush mode and not. Okay. Now I'm gonna pop this puppy back on the wheel. Not that side, I'm not. How do I keep the camera off the fact that I'm wearing socks and <laughs> sandals? They're actually not Crocs, they're high fashion. My socks are tucked into my tights too. <laughs> Where's the paparazzi? <laughs> This you want to do tighter than you think, at least for me. Because yes. when I don't do it tighter than I think, it rattles loose. If you're like a huge dude, maybe you do less tight than you think. Okay. Oh, pads need to go back in. If the problem were that there was a contaminant on it. Oh, spray the brake. It could be on the caliper. So I would go ahead and just spray the caliper down. Yeah, that's good. All over the carpet. Yeah, don't do this in your living room. Yeah. And then run the paper towel inside there and just wipe. This is the part that always gets me all confused. Oh, one says right, one says left. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> Get it? The reason you put that widget on is because then if that screw comes loose, it can't back all the way out and you lose your brake pads. The knee hold. Sign of a professional. <laughs> Okay, so now we're popping this back in. We're gonna center the brake. If that sounds totally foreign to you, make sure you check out our video about centering brakes because we're not gonna do that in detail right now. Actually, we're not even gonna center the brake because somehow it's I guess it's it was perfect. already centered. So what do you know about burning brakes? It can be challenging if you don't have a hill easily accessible, which is I think why often we have this issue here because we live on a slow, dirt road that's flat. What you want is to find a place where you can get going at a reasonable speed where you can kind of hold your brakes like three quarters of the way pulled, three quarters of maximum power. So you want everything to be in contact and you want to hold that. Three seconds on the front, three seconds on the back. Three seconds on the front, three seconds on the back. Making sure that you don't come to a stop and just kind of alternate back and forth. And like Sid said, this is maybe 75% braking power. They want to hear it going And then how do you know it's worked? Well, you know it worked when you can lock up both the front and the rear brake. So if you can stop you with the front, skid the rear wheel, then you're good to go. However, you wanna to wait to test that until you've done this, I would say five or six times per wheel. And this is how you sand and burn in your brakes in under one minute. First, remove your pads and rotors and inspect them. If the pads are severely worn or the rotor is burned or worn out, replace as necessary and skip the sanding and cleaning steps. If they look okay, take a piece of sandpaper and sand off the top layer of the pads until they are no longer shiny or metallic. Blow off the dust. Scuff up the rotor until it is slightly scratched. Clean with a non-chlorinated brake cleaner or isopropyl alcohol. 
If you think you may have gotten a contaminant on your caliper as well, clean the caliper. Reinstall the pads and rotors and put your wheel back on. Burn or bed the brakes in by pulling each brake to 75% of max power for three to four seconds without coming to a full stop. It is ideal to do this on a slight hill if possible. Repeat this for each brake five to 10 times or until you start to feel it bite. Confirm that it is burned in by making sure you can lock up each brake all the way. You can do this by doing a stoppy or a skid. Thank you.